Hi, I'm Mike Nickerson from the Department of Food and Bioproduct Sciences at the University of Saskatchewan. Today I want to talk to you about foam stability and foam capacity. These are two really important parameters about food proteins that tells us a lot about how a product and foams uh, lead to important textures such as mousses or breads or, or meringues for instance. Um, foam capacity is basically how much foam volume can be generated by a certain amount of protein under a certain set of conditions. Whereas foam stability is basically a measure of the change in foam volume over a given amount of time. But why don't we demonstrate to see how these two properties are measured. Measure 15 milliliters of protein solution into a tall 400 milliliter beaker. Place the beaker under the homogenizer probe, positioning the beaker so that the probe blades are immersed in the solution. Make sure the probe is not in contact with the bottom of the beaker. Turn on the homogenizer at speed 3. Then increase the speed a quarter of the way to speed 4 every 15 seconds until speed 4 is reached. Allow the solution to foam for a total of 5 minutes. After homogenization is complete, transfer the foam to a graduated cylinder. You may need to use a spatula to remove any remaining foam from the beaker. Using a spatula, level off the top of the foam and record the foam volume. After 30 minutes, record the volume of the foam remaining. Foaming capacity is calculated by dividing the foam volume by the initial sample volume, multiplied by 100%. Foaming stability is calculated as the foam volume remaining after 30 minutes divided by the initial foam volume, multiplied by 100%.